In this tutorial, we will learn how to set up a camera in Blender to follow a moving object. This is part of a series of tutorials on various camera techniques. Here, we can see an aeroplane moving along a path, and the camera is following it, just behind, on the same path. I assume that you already know about basic camera settings. If not, you can check the links in the video description. So, let us start with the base file for this tutorial. Here, we have already created an aeroplane, which will fly around the objects surrounding it, and the camera will follow it. We also need some objects, like buildings or mountains. For that, we have created a group of planets, which are nothing but this set of spheres. Let us first unhide these planets, so that the plane can move around them, in this scene. You may wonder, how can an aeroplane fly around the planets? This is just an example, you can add your own objects like buildings, or trees, or anything else that you would like. Our primary focus is to learn about the camera settings. First, we need to create a path around these objects, that the plane can follow. So, let us go to the Add menu, and under Curve, we'll add a Bezier curve. The curve may not be visible initially, because it is very small in size. We need to enlarge it sufficiently. We also need to edit this curve, and extend it around more planets, to create a longer path to follow. So, ensure that the curve is selected, and then, go to the Edit mode. The best way to edit a curve, is to go to the Top View mode. So press 7 on the number keypad, for the top view. In order to extend the curve, select any one vertex, and press E, on your keyboard, several times. We will skip this part, to keep the tutorial short, and more focused on the actual subject. If you need help on how to edit a curve, or how to make it perfect, you can check the links below. Once the editing is done, we will get a path created like this, the aeroplane, and the camera will follow this path. Let us go back to the object mode. We need to bind the aeroplane, to this curve. Let us select our aeroplane, and bring it to the viewport center. Then go to the Object Constraint tab. And add a constraint called, Follow Path. In the target field, select the Bezier curve that we have just created. But, you can see some offset here, between the aeroplane, and the curve's start point. That is because, the aeroplane has got some location transforms, here. We have to remove these values, and the aeroplane will be back to the curve's start point. But the aeroplane is not oriented correctly. It should have its head aligned to this way. For that, in the Object Constraint tab, enable this Follow Curve option. Now the plane is correctly aligned to the curve, but it is in the opposite direction. We need to rotate the aeroplane, in order to perfectly position it. So go to the Object Properties, and let us enter 180 degrees in the Z rotation. Now the aeroplane is heading towards the curve, correctly. Let us zoom out a bit. To move the aeroplane along this curve, go back to the Object Constraint tab, and click on this Animate Path button. If you now start the animation, the plane will move following the curve. But it is going very fast, we need to slow it down. Let us change our scene length from 1000, to say, 700. And to slow down the aeroplane speed, select the Bezier curve. Then go to this Curve tab. Down below, in this Path Animation section, you will see the number of frames. It defines the duration of any movement along the path. Let us increase it to 700 to match with our scene length. So, if we now play the animation again, from the beginning, the plane will move at a normal speed. Perfect! Now, we want our camera to also follow this same curve, along with the aeroplane. So, let us first select the camera object. And in the Properties tab, if there is any values in the location fields, it is mandatory to remove them first. It has to be zero. Then go to the Object Constraint tab. Add a Follow Path constraint, and select our Bezier curve in the target field. So, if we zoom it, and check the position, the camera is now placed at the start point of the Bezier curve, with the aeroplane. But, this will not work, because the plane should be ahead of the camera. The camera should be behind the plane, following it constantly. They cannot be together, there always has to be a gap between the two. In order to do that, we have to manually control the position of our objects, through this option called Fixed Position. Let us enable this for our camera object. If we turn it on, for a given frame number, this offset factor determines, how far our camera will move along its path. 
Initially, we will keep it zero, so that the camera starts from the beginning of the curve. Click on this switch to insert a keyframe for this position. Now, let us go to the end of the scene. We want the camera to go up to 95% of the curve length. So, let us enter 0.95. And we have to insert a keyframe. So we can see, at the end of the scene, the aeroplane is here, and the camera is here. We should have the same gap between them, also at the start of the scene. At frame 1, we can see that the aeroplane is overlapping with the camera. So let us select the aeroplane. And we have to enable this fixed position option. Then, at the start of the scene, the aeroplane should start, 0.05 length ahead of the start point, like this. So it will be right in front of the camera. We have to make a keyframe here. Then go to the end of the scene. The aeroplane has to be brought up to the end of the curve here. So, let us enter one in the offset. Also, insert the keyframe. So we have the same gap between them, at both the ends of the curve, at the beginning and at the end. Let us go to the start of the scene, and play the animation once more. We can see, the camera is following the aeroplane, perfectly. They are moving at the same speed, keeping the same distance between them, all throughout the curve. So the basic setup is done. Now, to verify whether the plane is actually visible through the camera, let us go to the camera view mode. But, you can see, nothing is visible here, because the camera is pointing towards some arbitrary direction. So, select our camera. And, in this object constraint tab, let us first minimize this follow path constraint. We will then add a track to constraint. In the target field, we need to select the aeroplane. Now, the camera view is correctly pointing to the right direction. If we now start the animation once again, you will see that the camera is following the aeroplane and it is capturing the view very nice, almost as we wanted. So our basic job is done. But I will tell you three more things which are important here that can make it more beautiful. The key element to this scene is this curve. If the curve is not smooth, or if you try to join two curves together, the output view can get jittery or jumpy. Let us look at some options to make the curve smooth and remove any tilt. First, go to the edit mode. Under control points, you will find an option called clear tilt. It can rectify the tilts in a curve and remove the jitters. You can also use these smooth options to smooth out the bends in the curve. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it can distort the shape of the curve, so verify the result that you get, and if required, go for manual edits. The second thing is, if you want to tilt the aeroplane towards the left, or to the right, as it is very natural for any aeroplane, you can do that easily. Let us go back to the camera view mode. In order to tilt the camera, let us first select the camera here. Then go to the Object Properties tab. To tilt the camera left or right, we need to change the X rotation or the Y rotation, it depends on how you made your camera model. It tilted towards the left. And a negative value in this will tilt the aeroplane to the other side. This way you can change its tilt throughout the path. While it is going around the objects, the turns and bends will decide which way the aeroplane should tilt, and you can accordingly make keyframes for the rotation angle at each position. We will see this shortly, but before that, let us talk about the third tip. If you want the camera to look from above the aeroplane, then select the camera. Then, in the Object Properties tab, we have to change the Z location value to give it some height. Let us enter 0.5. We can see how the view changed here. If we now run the animation, the camera will follow the aeroplane and look at it from above. We can probably lower this value down to 0.2 and we will get a different angle of view. You can of course keyframe this height, and change the viewing angle dynamically while it is moving. And, the scene will look even more beautiful if we add some suitable materials to our objects, and set up the light correctly. For this tutorial, we have already created some planet textures, so we can directly take a look at the rendered view mode. The aeroplane and the planets are now visible with their respective materials, although it is just a basic texture. Let us go to the World tab, and change the background color to something very dark, almost black, so that the objects look more attractive here. Then, our camera is already selected, so we get this camera tab, let's go there. Here, we have this section called viewport display, and under this, we have this field. Let us increase it to 1. 
so the area outside our camera becomes black. Let us play the animation again. We can also hide the overlays. We would like to tilt the aeroplane this way. So, let us go to the nearest whole number, maybe frame 100. Now, select the aeroplane and go to the object properties. Then, in this Y rotation, we will enter minus 20. So the plane is tilted in the right, let us insert a keyframe here. And, we need to go to the first frame. Let us remove the tilt here, and insert a keyframe. Now, let us watch it. The plane is tilting towards the right, while taking the first turn. And then, we would like it to reverse the tilt, on the other side, somewhere here. So, let us go to frame number 200. And here we will change the angle to, positive 20. We need to keyframe it. Let's go forward. Cool. Somewhere probably here. We need to tilt it again in the right. So, let us go to 300. And we will again make this angle minus 20. Don't forget to insert the keyframe. Let us resume the animation and watch it. The plane should then come back to a neutral position, somewhere here. Let us go to frame number 400. We will make the angle back to zero, and keyframe it. So it goes this way, through multiple turns. And finally at this stage, we will again tilt it in the left side. So, probably somewhere at frame, 550. Let us change this tilt angle to positive 20. And also, we need to insert a keyframe. We will watch it now. Fine. Let us go back to the first frame, and run the animation for the final time. Your particular scene may be very different, but these same techniques you can apply in any other scene as well, with suitable modifications. You can see how the tilting of the plane made it look more realistic. In any animation, we should always focus on such details, that are very eye-catching, but easy to implement. And the other important thing is the lighting, and your material, we will cover more on that in the upcoming videos. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.